All right, people. Midweek report time. So, we knew this would be a big week. A lot to talk about, a lot to preview, but a lot to get into. So, let's start with... Let Actually, but before we start with Joshua Dubois, we're not going to start with that. All right? Joshua Dubois was announced on Wednesday. It was announced yesterday that that fight will be taking place September 21st. But, even going into this week, there wasn't much... Like, there was a lot... Of questions like who would Joshua be fighting we kind of knew Dubois was the front runner but we didn't fully know if he would be the guy because again normally when a press conference is going to get called even even people who wouldn't really be in the know who would get you know media passes and stuff like that who would maybe get a, an email a couple of days ahead of schedule to say to be a, a press conference this day that day you'd hear rumors in the media someone would let it leak or maybe even the fighter would sh like show that they're in london or wherever the press conference is going to be and you're kind of like all right well he's not there for no reason <clears throat> so you can kind of put two and two together i didn't have any of that for this and eddie hearn only roughly about a week or so ago was saying that joshua dubois would have to be for a world title they want a Usyk to either get stripped or vacate. And it was around about this time last week, actually, I seen quotes from Eddie Hearn saying that. And I was kind of thinking, well, like, in the nicest way, why would Alexander Usyk voluntarily vacate if he doesn't have to? You know, it's not like they're saying, you know, you have to make a mandatory defense and you have to fight down, you can't fight, you know, stuff like that. It's kind of like, well, why would he vacate it if, you know, he didn't have to? Would he not get stripped or what way were they going to do it? And then he made that video where he said words to the effect of I'm gifting you the IBF title as in Daniel Dubois and Anthony Joshua. He's kind of gifted it to Dubois because Dubois has now been elevated to full champion so he's not necessarily gifted it to both. It's gone to Dubois. So Dubois, the history books will show, they will show that Daniel Dubois, heavyweight champion of the world, IBF heavyweight champion of the world. So he can put his name amongst the honor of British heavyweight champions, it will now say Daniel Dubois. So credit to him, credit to him. He is still only 26 years old, so God knows how many titles could actually be in him. But Alexander Usyk did vacate it. It does kind of, it's a weird one because it kind of makes you think now what will actually happen with the Tyson Fury fight. Because obviously the Fury fight was gonna be for Undisputed, the rematch. We thought that Usyk was gonna seek an exemption from the IBF to go through with that fight. That's not to say the fight won't happen, but, you know, uh, I watch people like Joe Stunner Box in an outmatch say that they really, truly doubt, they really, truly doubt that this rematch actually takes place. And I've always said, you know, I've said, like, look, I don't rule anything past Tyson Fury to pull out of a fight or anything like that. You know, I, I, I've been stung enough times. But I just thought the rematch, yeah, we probably will get it. But given the stuff Fury's been saying about, you know, I won't get a fair shake because of the conflict in Usex Corner. I know he didn't say that, but he's insinuating it. He's already said it post fight and he seems to be running with that. For him to say that, imply and try and, you know, gaslight the people into thinking that, oh yeah, I won the fight and, you know, Usex just got it on sympathy. And for it now not to be undisputed, that kind of does make you stop and think, hmm, will they actually, will will they go ahead and do it? Will Fury actually go through with the undisputed? Well, no, it won't be undisputed. Will he go through with the Usex rematch? if the undisputed carrot isn't being dangled over his head now. If it's just a, a rematch with, yeah, you'd be a unified champion, but you won't be undisputed. Uh, that's a good one, that's a good one, I don't know. I, don't, I genuinely don't know, that's made me rethink about it. But what it means is that we now have Joshua versus Dubois. Dubois will be defending his IBF Heavyweight Championship of the world against Anthony Joshua. Let's just briefly go over the undercard. I've already done a separate video on it, so I'm not gonna labor the point and go through every fight. Chamberlain versus Padley. Willie Hutchinson versus uh, Joshua Watsi, which is a fight I really do like. I really do like this fight. I'm looking forward to the face-off because these two guys, there seems to be a lot of needle there. There seems to be a lot, a lot of needle. I'm looking forward to seeing that face-off. Lads, I'm not gonna lie, looking forward to seeing that one. And on the ring, in the ring on fight night, I think that this is gonna be, this is a really, really good fight. This is a really, really good fight. I wonder, is this the finished undercard? Will they chuck a couple of prelims on? And sometimes those, you know, early prelim fights, they can be quite good. They can have some big names on it. Maybe not necessarily a necessarily big fight, but 
you know, they might stick a big name or two on there you don't know, or a, a decent sized name or two on there you don't know. So that's going to be an interesting undercard. But yeah, Boatsy versus Hutchinson, I like the fight. Tyler Denny, Hamza Shearus. I'm delighted for Tyler Denny to get this big stage in a big fight. He's going to make life changing money, which I'm really happy about because Tyler Denny, I've said it once, I'll say it again, a product of the gym. A fighter who isn't the most talented. He's not the most athletically gifted. And he did have a rocky start to his pro career, but he stuck at it. He went full time, he improved. He's got a monumental challenge ahead of him, though, in Hamza Shiraz. I mean, Hamza Shiraz is massive. I really liked what I seen from Like, he really impressed me. Not just in the fight against Ammo Williams, but his whole demeanor in the run-up to that fight. He really took that role of captain, and you really seen him lead. You know, I know it's, it's not like it's not necessarily a team game in that regard, but, like, he was representing Team Matrim, or Team Queensbury, and he really... I mean, that was a man in there, as far as I'm concerned. You know, they really came came of age, if you want to say it. He went from a boy into a man, and boy, did he fight well. Yeah, he had a rocky start in the second round. He got rocked a little bit by Ammo Williams, but boy, did he beat the living crap out of Ammo Williams in there. And I would probably pick Ammo Williams to beat Tyler Denny. Saying that, Styles do make fights, but I can't see Tyler Denny a variety of things the jab the punch and power the size I Tyler Denny against Felix Cash Felix Cash was the bigger man in there and saying that Tyler Denny was still able to hurt him and really beat Felix Cash up but Cash was the bigger man Hamza Shears is a lot more fresh than Felix Cash lives the lifestyle as well and this guy I mean God only knows how I, I, I really don't know how he did it how he made 154 pounds is beyond me because I look at him in the ring at middleweight and I'm like how do you make that weight? Imagine another six pounds he was... T I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he did it. I really don't. It's a mystery. Liam Smith versus Josh Kelly. Again, a bit of a weird one. It's just a fight that's kind of like, okay, that's a bit out of left field. Josh Kelly at middleweight. I forgot that. It wasn't going to be at 154 pounds. It's going to be a middleweight. If this fight happened five years ago, Liam Smith every day. I think he'd probably stop Josh Kelly, to be honest with you. I don't trust Josh Kelly. I don't think... I, I've always said it from the get-go with Josh Kelly. I've never really understood the hype. There's athleticism there. There's a little bit of ability there, but he's nowhere near. Is he? He's probably... A, with the European level is fair. That's probably Josh Kelly's level. Liam Smith is... Well, he's been a world champion. He's hung with some good guys. He's been in there with good guys. He's not given a poor account of himself against any of them. He fought that guy. I can't remember his name now in Russia and he got robbed a couple of years ago in 2021 I can't remember I think he fought Majimov if I'm not mistaken he got robbed in that fight I thought he won that fight but he's never given a bad account of himself except you could say maybe in the Eubank Jr. rematch and a prime Liam Smith he beats Josh Kelly I, with that style I, I don't see it going well for Josh Kelly I don't think we have a prime Liam Smith though and I think now it's going to push it in Josh Kelly's favour and lastly, we have a fight that I'm really not... The more I think about it, the more I'm really not okay with it. Which is Josh Warren and Anthony Kikache. It's not that I'm not okay with it because I think it's going to be a bad fight necessarily. I don't. I think it's going to be a pretty good fight. But I don't... I, I really don't like the fact... Listen. Under extreme circumstances... Like, let's say you have a champion who loses his title on a very dubious decision. Or a guy who gets... A crack of the world title fight and he loses again a very dubious controversial decision i'm more okay with them getting maybe a straight crack at the same champion or getting a crack of the world title because many people believe he should have won that's okay bit like nicky ball a lot of people didn't mind him getting a straight crack coming from it well he didn't lose it was a draw to be fair but you, you get what i mean you know going from a fight that you didn't win but many people feel you should have into another world title fight a lot of people would say that that's acceptable but two back-to-back -back world title fights, one of which you were knocked out, and the other, you literally had to fail your way to a majority decision loss. And they were both at the weight below. You've never campaigned at 130 pounds, and you're getting an instant crack at a world title. I don't like that. I, I don't like that. I don't think that's how it should be. I I've always liked Josh Warren. I've always liked watching him. He seems like a cool guy, but I have to be real on here. I don't like this fight for that particular reason. If they were doing this as a non-title fight, I wouldn't care. But I don't think it's right for Josh Warren 
to have back-to-back -back defeats and world title fights to instantly move up and wait and get another crack. And again, it's not like he is a, a former world champion who maybe lost his title under dubious circumstances at 126. The WBA or WBO or one of the sanctioned bodies said, okay, you really did win the fight, but you're moving up and wait anyway. All right, you can, have a, you can have a crack. You can have a crack at the champion. Fair enough, you're coming off a lot. But again, I could look at that and say, mm, I can see where they're coming from. Two back-to-back -back defeats. I'm sorry, no. You shouldn't be fighting for a world title. I'm sorry, you shouldn't. I, I like the fight. Don't get me wrong. I like it. I think it's going to be a good fight. But uh, no, in my opinion, he shouldn't be in there. Should not should not be for a world title. Anthony, I would have, I'd be more happy if it was Warrington, no disrespect to Kakache, if it was Warrington versus Lee Wood too. Make more sense. Winner can fight for a world title. No problems there. No, I don't like the fact Josh Warrington is getting the straight crack at a world title. Like the weight division above at that after two back-to-back -back defeats in world title fights. Mm, don't like it. Daniel Dubois versus Anthony Joshua. Again, what more can I say about that fight? I love it. I think it's going to be a brilliant fight. I can't wait, Paris. I think it's going to be absolutely cracking. If I had to give an early pick, I would say that this fight is going to go... It's probably going to go mid-rounds. But when I say mid-rounds, I'm thinking more 7-8-9. I think we're going to see a knockout. And I don't think it's going to be a referee jumping in and stopping. I don't think it's going to be a fight or maybe retiring on his stool. I don't think it's going to be an eye cut that the doctor has to wave off. I think this is going to be a clean man down either way. I would make Anthony Joshua the favourite and I would be expecting him to start as favourite. But I'm not just going to look at Dubois and just say, ah, I'm going to rule you out. Dubois has youth on his side. He's very explosive. With the exception of Vladimir Klitschko, this may be the biggest puncher anthony joshua has faced as a pro again with the exception of vladimir klitschko because klitschko was a tremendous puncher but daniel dubois i mean like ask philip hergovich i know he didn't go down but that says a lot about hergovich's chin ask philip hergovich does daniel dubois hit hard i'm sure he'll tell you he definitely does i'm sure alexander rusek he'll probably tell you the same daniel dubois hits very hard so joshua is going to want to be careful in there now, this weekend i'll go back to joshua now in a wee bit because he's been saying some interesting things i will go back to that in a wee bit but we'll just have a talk about briefly and I, I feel bad saying briefly because it's such a good fight juan francisco estrada versus jesse bam rodriguez on the zone in phoenix arizona this saturday sonny edwards is on the undercard as well as many of you will know if you've watched this channel any great length of time for many many years one of my favorite fighters has been juan francisco estrada even though I felt that he lost the rematch to Chocolatito, I actually picked Estrada to win that fight, but I actually feel Chocolatito did enough to win that rematch. I've always loved watching Francisco Estrada. He's one of my favorite fighters to watch. He's just tremendous. He's in his mid-30s now. At that weight, 115 pounds. Yeah, I mean, that is ancient at that weight. Estrada's had a brilliant career he is two and one against chocolatito which takes some doing i mean to get a win over chocolatito was an achievement in of itself and correct me if i'm wrong chocolatito was only lost to estrada and runvisai they're the only two fighters i'm i would imagine who have beaten roman chocolatito gonzalez he might have more losses but it's only those guys who have beaten him if i'm not very much mistaken which i believe actually it is and yeah estrada is tremendous he's super talented and this, to me, is a real passing of the torch fight. I think, and, and Francisco Estrada is going to come in and try and win. Oh, best believe. But I think that Jesse Bam Rodriguez is tremendously talented. I mean, this kid has talent to burn. He's only 24 years old. Eddie Hearn has really, truly struck gold with this kid. Because I think he is going to be a star for many years to come. And I think he's gonna go, he's gonna go through these weights. He might not do it like Naomi in a way where he just goes from the weight, the weight, the weight. He will run into trouble along the way. I think Inoue is a, a once in a generational talent, but Bam Rodriguez is tremendous. I love watching him and I think he's gonna win this fight. Probably on points. I'm gonna go with Bam Rodriguez to win this fight on points against Juan Francisco Estrada. So that'd be my pick there. Let's have an old look-see and have a chat. Oh yeah, I seen that the Dubois-Joshua fight will be shown 
obviously it's going to be on pay-per-view as if we didn't already know it's going to be on pay-per-view it's going to be shown across three separate platforms sky sports tnt and the zone so you take your pick of which one you want to choose to watch the pay-per-view on i'll have mine you will all have yours but there you go it, it's mad the way since the saudis have got involved it's not like one tv network who's you know looked in and got the rights to this fight or this one it's, it's the mob which is good in a way if you don't like the zone you watch it on tnt if you don't like tnt you watch it on the zone if you don't like either you watch it on sky there you go happy out the wbc president mauricio Sullivan, in his infinite wisdom in his infinite 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 wisdom has reiterated that he would like to bring in wbc's va store var equivalent video replay system for the alexander usek tyson fury rematch and as i have said before i'm not necessarily against it but if you're going to trial it because the words he used originally was it will be a trial you trial it in a small insignificant fight you don't do it in a massive fight that's completely illogical if it cocks up forgive my right here, my friends hopefully the algorithm doesn't doesn't mind that well better it happens on a small show where it's not really going to have that much of a detrimental impact than on a big one Sullivan, use your head that's what i got to say on that one negotiations between vasily lomachenko and Javante Tank Davis for the WBA and IBF world titles at lightweight unifications uh, are now ongoing as confirmed by Bob Arum oh now I've seen this now god I am um, I really <sighs> Mark goes out to Roy Jones Jr because I seen this statement and I seen it was from Roy Jones but like I kind of had to read it again when I seen it originally and Ah, his son I don't even know how you could go through something like this but his son is no longer with us he took his own life last weekend the Roy Jones released a statement and you can tell by the word he's obviously devastated and I'll just take a moment to offer my condolences to Roy Jones and his family I yeah when I seen it, I couldn't believe what I was seeing uh, when I was reading it. And I was just like, Lord. It doesn't matter what background you have. I mean, it. you just don't know. You just don't know. So, thoughts and prayers go out to Roy Jones and his family, of course. The WBC have now made Devin Haney their WBC 140-pound champion in recess. Meaning Alberto Paleo, I believe is how you say that name, will now be full champion he will defend his world title against Sandor Martin next. So that does mean Devin Haney doesn't have a world title now at 140 pounds, which is interesting. I get the, I'll talk more about Devin Haney in a wee bit because I, I have quotes here and I'm thinking he's looking at Ryan Garcia. I think he's waiting until Ryan Garcia comes back. Now I seen this and I couldn't believe it. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I couldn't believe what I was reading. And I couldn't believe that the British Boxing Board of Control and UCAD, or maybe it's just UCAD, didn't realise this. So forgive me and apologies if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. Uh, Moises Caleros. Caleros. I think that's how you say it. Moises Caleros. Apparently he tested positive for somebody old how you doing in a UCAD test following his defeat to Galal Yafai last year. So he was given a four-year ban by the British Boxing Board of Control and UCAT. Okay. Problem is, he actually passed away in March. Seemingly, UCAT were unaware of the fact. This reminds me of, I believe it was the WBO. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I can't remember the fighter it was, but I think it was in the 90s. Or 90s, early 2000s, where they ranked the fighter who was dead. And I think it was a Joe Stunner who told me it wasn't just that they ranked him. He actually moved up in the rankings after he died. I think it was Joe Stunner Boxing who told me that once. That is just something else. I mean, good Lord. I, I, UCAD really don't cover themselves in glory sometimes, don't they? Not They really, they really don't. And speaking of other bands, and this is a, this is a joke of a band. It really is. Julio Cesar Martinez, whose career has just been on a downward trajectory over the last couple of years, 
has been banned from boxing for nine months. Was he pregnant or something? By the Nevada State Athletic Commission following his uh, positive drug test for S5. I can't even pronounce that. It's a masking agent in his most recent win. The fight has been ruled a no contest and he gets a nine month ban. I mean, what is that? What actually, what is that? That's nothing. A nine month ban. You can fight twice in a year and have a fight the first, you can have a fight in January and not fight again until November. That's twice in a year. And that's more than nine months. And that's, that's no, that, that would be completely understandable for some fighters to do that. If you're a top level fight, fighter, excuse me. What the? And UCAD didn't cover themselves in glory or they, they banned a fighter who had passed away. But at the very, like, a four year ban, like that's a serious ban. If it happened, if you are a fighter and you get hit with a ban like that, it's a, that's a serious ban. You ain't never gonna do, you ain't never gonna cheat again. A nine month ban, you'd be just like, oh, well, I wasn't planning on fighting for 10 months anyway. So right, there you go, everyone wins. Well, except the fight's in no contest, but you get what I mean. Ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Anthony Joshua and Daniel, oh, sorry, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. Anthony Joshua on Tyson Fury losing against Alexander Usyk. I'm glad Fury isn't going to be a champion. I've always said he's an idiot. He's very disrespectful. He has to step on people to make himself feel good. The way he disrespected Usyk, rapid this and middleweight that, it's not good for the sport. If you respect, if I respect you and you respect me, we can lift the sport and make people think we are the two most elite fighters in the world. But Fury will step on you and make you look like a guy who's just walked out of a pub. Then he goes and gets spanked. He deserved it. Anthony Joshua pulling no punches there. He really, really ain't pulling no punches there when he talks about Tyson Fury. And as I said, because the Fury fans will bring up, well, Anthony Joshua can't talk about disrespect. You know, he threw the belts out of the ring. It was very disrespectful. You're, you're completely right. It was. He shouldn't have done it. The whole thing he did in the ring after the USEC fight was cringe at best. And it, you, it definitely was disrespectful. The big difference is Anthony Joshua apologized almost immediately after it. And he's been very respectful of Alexander Rusek. And likewise, Alexander Rusek, a forgiving man, he accepted the apology. And he has also been very respectful to Anthony Joshua before and after. Tyson Fury is still implying that Alexander Rusek only got the decision because of the conflict in his country, which to me is just scummy. It's just scummy. It's an absolutely ridiculous thing to say. It's beyond disrespectful. And he hasn't retracted that. Has he? No. I don't recall him retracting it. Tyson Fury is the guy who, for this guy who dishes it out, calls Alexander Rusek all the names under the sun, this, that, and the other, makes comments about his teeth, makes comments about his size, everything. Uh, as I said in the video I did earlier, so I'm not going to labour the point, if you so much as dare critique Tyson Fury, you're a hater and you get banned from even giving him an interview. I mean, it's got so bad now that uh, Tyson Fury seems to only want to give interviews on that, what is it, Furious Energy Drink YouTube channel, or he gives it to Umar on Box Nation, or, you know, people who won't ask him any tough questions. Because it seems like you even, I go back to the True Geordie interview, because that interview there, if you've ever seen it, True Jordy is not in the least being antagonistic towards Tyson Fury. He's not in the least trying to poke the bear to try and get a response. He's not doing any of that. He's just questioning Tyson Fury where other people aren't. And what did Fury do? He threw all of his toys out of the pram and said he's never going to give True Jordy an interview again. For what? What did he do that was so wrong? Did he call you names? Did he disrespect you? He didn't do any of that. You say one thing, but this, what you're doing with the Chisora rematch shows something else. What is it? What's wrong with that? Nothing. I would call that journalism, to be honest with you. And Tyson Fury, no, kicks up a fuss. So Fury can dish it out, but he clearly can't take it. Anthony Joshua, I've said it in the video, I like what I'm seeing from Anthony Joshua. I like the fact that he just seems, it's almost as if he's fighting, I say fighting, but he's just... Well, yeah, fighting and just living with that freedom that it's like, you know what? I don't care about the sponsors. I don't care about this. I'm just going to say what's on my mind. This is on my mind. This is why I think of Tyson Fury. This is what I'm going to think. This is what I'm going to say. And that's it. Listen, I think that that's what Anthony Joshua needs. I think that when you look at the USEC kind of, would you call it a breakdown that he had in the ring, it was inevitable. Because I think Anthony Joshua has been bottling a lot of those emotions up. He's been bottling a lot of things up that he wants to come out and say. 
And I think now he just feels the hell with it. And he's probably with the fact that he is near the end of his career. I'm not saying he's going to retire this year or anything like that, but he knows himself a couple of years and he's done. So I'm sure he's kind of thinking, do you know what? What is the point in keeping it all bottled up inside? I'm just going to say what I feel. And tough you know what if you don't like it. So fair play. That's what I got to say on that one. Lads, I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed it, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe as always if you haven't already. And until next time, peace.